Case of 54. Check, 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 check. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. I'm in. Am I here? Can you hear me? I'm here. 
Your your sound your sounds a little low. Is that me? Your, sound, your sounds a little low. All right, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Turn my speakers off. Turn my speakers off. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to find them. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to find them. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to find them. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to find them. Uh, yeah, I do. I have to find them. Yeah, that sounds maniacal. That sounds maniacal. That sounds Whoa, that's weird sounding. Uh, that's weird sounding. Uh, I don't know. But let me do that. Uh, where would I put this tiny little thing? This. Let me see if it'll do it this way. Let's see if it'll Bluetooth. All right, uh, let me see. Do, 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 do. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Uh, I did do. Is it wor working now? Perfect. <laughs> what kind of host? What kind of host are you? <laughs> Here, let me close my door so Kathy Kathy doesn't have to hear this nonsense. Dodgers just pulled up 3-0. All right. Uh, West side. All right. Oh, oh, well just let me tell you there's a little bit there's a little bit of lag. I mean, I'm hearing the lag in my headphones. Yes, sir. I, I don't know what to say here because I keep hearing myself in my headphones. I, I, I keep hearing myself about 10 seconds behind. I'm listening to the feed. What does that mean? I, I can. Uh,
Am I back? Yeah, I can hear you now. I still have the lag. Are there multiples of me again? Okay, let me say something. Uh, I just said it and it, it it came back to me three seconds later. All right, let's, let's go live. I don't care. This is, uh, let's just say these are the little voices in my head. <laughs> I don't know. I have the Bluetooth on so I could hear my. uh my uh my i don't i have my i have my speakers off because you said turn off my speakers because we were getting feedback i'm on my headphones the Bluetooth is connected to my earphone, my headphones. Just the tail, just the tail. <laughs> it is doing nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. There we go. All right, put it back on. That way I don't lose it. Uh, I got my cockatiel going. All right, and there we are. <laughs> there we are live. Do you see? All right, we're live. Hi, everybody. Or no one? No one? Uh, I can't tell to anyone. God help us. You know, I never know if anyone's going to ever watch these. They'll definitely be recorded, though. Um, so we'll have that. Anyway. Wow. This, this is, this is psychedelic. I, it's like the room has gotten really crowded. There, there's a lot of people talking in here. <laughs> you know, I, I heard that happen before when you were on and I didn't know what was going on. It's like some kind of weird, crazy setting you have going on in your computer. I'm hearing you twice. I, I, like I said, when you first started going, I was listening to it. And I was like, what's going on with Ron's setup? Wow. Like crazy. Holy cow. <laughs> this, I got to tell you, Are you this, <laughs> this, this is like some kind of interrogation uh, technique. Uh, I, I don't know how many voices are going on, but. <laughs> are you going to make it? There's a lot of people in here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so here we go. Welcome to uh, welcome to Unsolvable Beta. God only knows what we're doing. We don't have a clue. Don't listen to us. That's all I got to say. We're going to talk about art. Today we're going to talk about a piece of my art. Ron put in my art before his students. God only knows why he did that. Those poor kids. Um, are you going to be able to make it through the episode with all the voices in your what? head? What are you? Are you going to be able to make it through what? this episode with all the voices in your head? Can you hear me still, Ron? I don't know. We're going to find out, aren't we? <laughs> I hear both of you. Oh God. Okay. All right. <laughs> At least you know. I if I miss a question, I won't for I won't forget it because uh, you're saying it twice. 
All right. What, what, how do we start? Are we going to talk about this piece of art? Or what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do here? Shall I, talk, shall I just explain what's going on here? I think you already know it, though. And so it's like, um, I guess I could talk about the inspiration of it. Are you even there, Ron? Ron is gone. Ron didn't make it through. Hang on, we'll be back. I should be back. I don't. I, uh, I was going to say, oh, I don't hear the I don't hear the second voice, the late voice. And. Uh, you feel sane? No, I do hear it now. <laughs> yeah. What's going on over there with that? I heard that when you had it going through the speakers, too. You know, um, something's going on in your settings. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, you know, I, I have my headphones on, speakers. Uh, let me try this. Um. Are you logged into Twitch and watching it as well? No, I'm not. No. I, I just clicked on to your, uh, your uh, link you gave me. Okay. All right. You want to try now? I'm, I'm, we're already on. Wow, everything seems to be settled. Yeah, we're on now. All right, cool. Like this. <laughs> Okay, now, now is it better? Yeah, it's not me, it's you. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no God. beer. Got tea. I got water. I need to rehydrate, man. I've been That's having old. This has been a long week, Ron. I had a really, 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 really long week. What happened? Oh man, some of it I can't even go into, but uh, let's just say that I finished the, I finished the new horn dog on I, I did like an all nighter. I, I I started inking on Tuesday wow. and finished inking on Wednesday. Had it printed on Wednesday and sent it in the mail to Comic Con on Wednesday. I drew I basically drew all the panels on on Saturday and Sunday, and then inked it all Monday night, Tuesday, and then finished it off Wednesday morning. How are they going to do Comic Con? Is it going to be virtual? Well, uh, we're talking about for next year, for 2021. I think they're probably yeah. assuming that they're going to do it live. Wow. I've been listening to NPR and it doesn't sound like that. I mean, it doesn't sound like this is going to be resolved anytime soon. Well, you know, the weird thing is there's, there's, there is a one in March, the WonderCon, mm -hmm. that, will, that will determine everything. If they can, if they pull off the WonderCon in March, then you know for sure they're going to do Comic Con. If they don't pull off the WonderCon, then all the chips are still on the table. Yeah, I think it's like that for everybody. Our businesses, our industry is in the same position. Uh, they're they're using the children, the elementary school children, as the guinea pigs, and uh, and waiting to see what happens from there and. Uh, uh, they already, uh, they tried, I think, special ed at, uh, was it Ocean Beach? And uh, a lot of t 
teachers just opted out, said, hey, no way. You know, even at our school, only a few, I'd say about a quarter of the teachers are on staff on the on site. Uh, we're locked in our rooms. There's no students. Uh, but uh, even the PPE, the personal protective equipment, we don't have any. Uh, it's it's very strange. It's actually kind of sad that they the district wants to put us in the classroom and they're not prepared for it. Not even with basic materials. Uh, you know, I always wondered how they were going to try to pull that off because you know, those, for one thing, school systems are massive. It's one thing for a college, which is an individual entity, but for a school system, it covers a lot of ground. Yeah. Like a lot of ground, and you have no control over the people once they leave. Yeah, it's, not like a, it's not like a fixed environment. Kids are going all over the place. Mm -hmm. But at the same yeah. time, man, you know, many of these kids got nowhere else to go. It's really good. But I think it's good that they stay home. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I, I really don't get it. It's working right now. I mean, I'm getting the same kind of, uh, uh oh. We lost Ron. Back? Back? Yeah, you're back. All right. You're, you're, uh, getting kind of, you're getting the same kind of what? Connection with the kids? Or what were you going to say? Oh, no. I, I, uh, I get, I'm developing a connection with certain kids, and that's really all you ever do. I mean, there are, uh, as a core group in each classroom that you connect with, uh, I, I mean, I, I can't think of any teacher that's going to tell me that 100% of those children are engaged with that one teacher on a personal level. Uh, that would be scary. I, I, I would check the drawers for needles and opioids. Uh, but <laughs> hey, don't say that. No, no, that, no, no, that not, no. That was never intended. No. <laughs> Gosh, no. <laughs> I got. I have a script here, folks. I'm just playing with the script. <laughs> he, yeah. I'm. I'm supposed to be. You know, you know, no, no, but see, you said it's working, and I just don't see how it could possibly be working for everyone. I just don't. I mean, I'm looking at what we're just doing here right now. What, what me and you are doing. I don't see how it could be working for all these thousands of kids. Well, I mean, it, 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 can, it can work. I mean, it's already per I, I, I run regular classes every day uh, with all, the majority of my students showing up, and, uh, and I conduct a class. Uh, I also do, you know, tutoring on the outside and mentoring uh, on other offices. It, it's time-consuming for the teacher. It's absolutely a lot of work it just sucks all the air out of the room uh but uh but it can be done it's a lot of work but it can be done and i prefer this i really do i prefer this uh the hiccups are just what working with people is is like it's the, the mechanism and once we get uh get used to it get used to the machinery we'll be able to do this on a regular basis i would prefer this many of my kids prefer doing this but i'm just saying though there's there's definitely this economic steps within the whole structure of it all that not all the kids are going to be on the same level i just don't know how it can work for everybody well, th that's the problem with finding equity in our country. So I think, really, it's probably a tool that could be used. I mean, 
solving all the issues in our country is not going to happen in four years. Okay, uh, it's going to be it's going to be decades before this happens, before we come around. But I really think that this is one of these tools that can help us reach that equity because it's going to force school districts and the Department of Education, the federal government, to come in and supply everybody with an opportunity to connect and make sure that they are con they have the connected connectivity. It's going to be something the schools are going to have to support. They're going to have to do. Brick and mortar might be on its way out. But then are we going to have to then solve homelessness? Because, I mean, I don't know how you can say we'll give them all the tools if they got nowhere to keep them. I, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a big thing. I mean, it's huge. I mean, but structurally, you know, we can change. I mean, that's how the cultures change. That's how advancements are made. I mean, there are certain stressors that happen to the culture, and they force people to move in that direction. I, for one, you would think that I would be, I would be on that side of the conservative. I wanted to, I want to go back to the way it is. But no, I've looked at this and went, holy cow, this is a whole different ball game. And I can think about this environment in an entirely different way. Hey man, you know, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, you already know that I am on that side of it all. You already know that. Because I believe that, I can't believe that college professors aren't free agents. Why do you have to work for one particular college if you have the knowledge and you can throw your knowledge out there to everyone? It's the whole idea of having, the, it's the idea of giving people degrees that keeps the money involved. Without the idea you, you, were, you, were, you were right about, every, really, our issues are all centered around capitalism. Absolutely. And, and, about, I mean, I mean you, can, you, can, you can actually sweep everything away and say, if we solve this, if, if we restructure our economic philosophy, how we operate, uh, you know what made me think about that? And I had to laugh. I was watching, I'm watching the World Series, and on the mound, there's a Geico logo, and I'm. Damn it. Exit. Okay, I'm back. Am I here? Yeah, you're back. Go on. On the mound, there's a Geico logo. Yeah, the Geico logo is on the mound. And I was looking at it. It's not etched into the mound. It's floating on top of the mound. And I'm like, going, well, that's weird. Why do we need that? I mean, it's why? Actually, you know, it's actually not on the mound. You know, it's all digital, right? Yeah, no, but that was what I was saying. I, at first, I was going, oh, that's weird, man. Why would they etch in Geico on the mound? And I'm looking at it, float, and I'm going, holy cow. I mean, why not just, why not just uh, float uh, uh, the, a uh, you know, state, uh, state farm on the back of the pitcher when he's doing his windup, you know? Uh, I mean, if, you're, if that's what it's about, or maybe you, maybe you have a, a, a small box on the side and the rest is just ongoing commercials for three hours straight and then the game is in a little window down on the side because really it's the money that's important it's the advertising that's important uh, but I don't know I think this is a good thing myself I, I really do I, I think what's happening right now is it's it sounds like a reality check for the whole country the whole, no, I, I, the whole I, you know, I like what you said though when you said it's a stressor because that is what makes things move. You know, capitalism isn't, wasn't here forever. I mean, we no. did come from a feudal society before that. I mean, it wasn't yeah. always, I always wonder how trade happened before there was like coin. You know, <laughs> you know trade, well, I mean, trade, there were all kinds of different, there were all kinds of different types of trade and it, depend on, it depended on who you were. Now, if you were part of the trade, if you were, uh, let's say, uh, an, an, uh, uh, an indigenous person and, uh, and living uh, on a mission, uh, you were in the economy because you were the machine that uh, grew the corn, uh, uh, built the, 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 uh, the missions, and, uh, and, and kept the... But the missions is almost like a type of subjugation. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. It depends on what part of the uh, economy you're in. Uh, you can be subjugated or you can be the ones that write the paychecks, you know. Uh, but, I, you know, yeah, stressors are going to change. You know, are going see, to the only thing that makes these things work is willing participants. You have to be willing to participate to make it work. No, I, I'd have to disagree with you. I you mean... Know, you I, I I don't think anybody that came over here in uh, after uh, uh, sixteen or seventeen hundreds on a boat, uh, and, and I'm not talking about they were on the top floor. Uh, I don't think they were willing, but they were part of the well, economy. Well, when did it become like okay, twenty five pounds of flour is worth two hours of labor? You see. That's that's a part that's a part of that whole thing you don't have any say in. You're not part you're you're not part of that. You're you're subjugated. You're you're subjugated by by systems that run out in a world that you will never taste, hear, or feel. See, you know what? This is so weird because this ties back to art. It's like the value of art. What determines the value of something? I, well, yeah, it's those that write the paychecks. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we, we work in art, Ted. I mean, there's millions of us. I'm, I'm beginning to see that there's millions of us that are subjugated. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's a willing business that's, it's a business that, uh, that is operated by those that we have absolutely we i mean we have absolutely we have no absolutely you know this is where we're frustrated this is where we go back to jeff coons oh god oh please don't, don't. i mean uh, please oh. i mean please i mean oh. i i would rather have a real balloon than a stainless steel one uh but well, see see for me it's more like well, who determines who gets to be a gallows and who gets to be the person that says art is worth if you something? Have to, if you have to ask that question, then <laughs> you're not part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though. I you know, know what you're I'm saying, but that's exactly what I'm saying. If you have to ask that question, then you're not part of it. It's like you're, you're, not, you're not part of the game. You put the art of on Sotheby's and all of a sudden it's going for $20 million and you're like going, well, when the guy made it, he couldn't get a dollar. I'm getting good at this. It's almost like back. it's almost like a reflex now. I, I I see that confused look on your that confused. Yeah, like, where did Ron go? Because you freezed up. It's something on your, your internet, like my internet. Is, I, like I said, I just got brand new fiber, so my shit's working good right now. All right, so, okay, you got fiber. You have fiber, I have uh, cable. See, anyway. I don't get to experience your world. Well, there you go, Ron. That's what happens when you get to this level. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm <laughs> saying. I was just saying, <laughs> Jeff Coons. <laughs> I'm not done with, no, we're not done with this whole thing. The whole thing is, though. I don't understand what determines the pricing of art. Okay, just look at my new piece. It, and it's, it's, we're going to talk about art in a few seconds. I'm a, we're going to put that to the side, which doesn't make any sense because that's what we're going to talk about. But um, I just never understood that. I mean, I just know that as an artist, when I went to look into getting into a gallery and the money that they wanted for what they were going to do was going to make my pricing just be beyond Anything I could even fathom, and I didn't know if I wanted. You know, you know how it works. You go up, yeah. and you could never come down. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if you're if you're gonna, yeah, if if that's if you are gonna become part of the system, you're gonna work in the system like that. Yeah, you you can't go back because it doesn't benefit them, and it's a business. It's money. For you, it's art. Uh, and and hopefully there's a financial return. You're, you're not looking at me again. Uh, yeah, I'm right. Okay. Yeah, oh, you can hear me. 
Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you got to think about it from their end of it. I mean, they're, you're not so much there because they love you that much. They're looking at you as a commodity and they can sell you and they're definitely not going to bring the price down unless they want to get rid of you. Then they drop the price on you and, 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 and garage sale you out. But I don't know if, uh, but see, yeah. when, who, when do you get control of it? It's yours. What? No, oh, it's, man, not, you know, it's not it's, yours. See, that's the whole thing. Even Jeff Koons doesn't own it. Because if they just should decide to disown that child, you know, that child's gone. Somebody else comes right in, like Jack in the Box. There's always somebody else that can flip that bur burger even better. And so... Uh, I mean, to, to think you control anything, the only thing we control right now, and we don't even have control over this, uh, it keeps popping out. Uh, but, uh, I, I, you know, I just, I just get rid of the whole notion of control. I'm too old to even worry about that anymore. Well, I, I'm, not I, I, about, I'm not talking about that kind of control. The whole thing is, if you're going, and this is it, you know what I'm saying, if you're going to commodify and monetize everything, you know, everything, then do you even get to control how you get up in the morning and what you're going to put on as far as your clothes? No, I, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I have to do. <laughs> I don't control very much of anything. <laughs> but in the art, but no, okay. So, and so as an artist, do you, do you get to control what you do? Well, that was something I was talking about uh, earlier. Uh, to one of my students, I was talking about him yesterday, and I was just being as frank as I possibly could, and uh, as I could be, and, and it stung, I mean, even to hear myself say it, but I says, one of the reasons why I didn't want to work in the art world became, I, I, the realization was, I don't like working for anybody else's dream. I don't like doing that. I don't want to work for anybody else's dream. So I don't want to work in the art world at all. I, in, I enjoy making my art and then just sending it out and hope that somebody appreciates it enough to put it in a gallery, you know, and, and, and that, that has its own life. So it's a very <laughs> modest, it's but a very why? modest. Obviously, you must seek the goal. So, for it to even uh, to get to the gallery part, because you have to get it in front of people's faces. Look, this well, is I'm, willing, I, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. So it's, it's a small price I have to pay because all it. I mean, it's thirty five dollars that I pay forty dollars, fifty dollars for whatever it is to get it into a show. Uh, you know, it's a small price to pay to just do it. And if you get into it, nothing lost. Uh, I still win because I still have my artwork. You know, I, I don't lose anything. Yeah, but see, once again, we get back to the idea of control again. So, do so you have a certain degree of control of that because you can decide on which show you want to try to get into. Well, I have control now because I've appreciated that before. I was when I was. Ron. Well, we lost Ron. I don't know what happened. Oh, here he comes. Okay, I'm back. And he's back. Why, why don't we just move this into the green room? Uh, I'm, am I back? Am I back? Oh, Ron, you're back. Oh, no, you're gone. Back? Now you're back. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it, it's just a personal thing. Uh, I like I said, I make make my art for uh, for a different reason now, and, and I don't have any regrets for it. And whatever transpires, uh, well, 
that's a plus. Everything's a plus at that point. It's all gravy. You know, I don't, I'm not worrying. I'm not seeking anything. I'm not looking for some major gallery to get into. I'm not looking to be recognized uh, in any way. In fact, I really shun it myself. I, you know, I, I prefer to remain in the shadows and, and do my work. And, do, and that's why I love teaching because I can talk to these kids that are so intrigued by it and I can just give them, I can be their, uh, I can be their coach. I, you know, I can, I can be their cheerleader. Well, what do you have? Do you have goals? I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now, Ron? No. Oh, Jesus. What happened here? Okay. We back? And Say something, Ted. It's not there. Am I not there? I'm I'm not I'm not here. You don't see me at all. <sighs> How about now? Is it something I'm doing? I, I don't know. I can't. I, I don't know. I can't. Let's see. My settings. Everything's on. Uh, Again? Now? Um, hmm. Settings default. What is going on here? Let's try. How about now? Wow, it's, it's trippy. It says we're offline. Stream output, okay. We're back. All right. We're back. Ty, sorry, folks. Now you have what to about, listen to me. And, what about me? Uh, Am I back now? My sorry story. Can you hear me now, Ron? Uh, I want to talk about his work, really. Well, talk about my work. Uh, he's over there, silent, talking to himself. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I see his picture. What uh, about now? How about if I do this? Ron. God, this is so All right. insane. All right, I'm back. Ron. Yeah. What about now? Can you hear me? I took a shower while I was waiting. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Just talk about the work, man. You know, what did the kids right. say? What, you know, before we get away, before you know, look, just before we get away. You know, when we met, I was completely happy doing art all by myself and never showing it to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you were the one that talked me into actually showing artwork to people. You know that, right? Shouldn't listen to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Let's talk about the art. What, what, what's going on? What the kids have to say? Try, try, I can't believe how you try to just throw everything on me. It's not my fault. Especially this critique. You asked for it. I uh, you <laughs> you, uh, I, I, I had my kids... Um, Critique it, and uh, let's see. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen different points they came up with. So we can try and address them all. We spent most of our time talking about shit we don't know about, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna fix capitalism. And, 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 and now we're gonna talk about something we really know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so uh one of the things that uh the kids really did uh find uh amazing and i have some points too that i want to bring up but i'll i'll deal with those at the very end uh they talked about the space in this uh th that was the most evident thing uh was the space uh so do you want to talk about the space yeah dude you know uh it was um hmm huh Okay, first off, the thing is called Two Cezanne. It's basically, I was just boning up on a bunch of Cezanne artwork, just looking at a ton of it when I was in Mexico, and I drew this little drawing in my sketchbook. 
with a pencil, you know, mm -hmm. looking at a lake. Same kind of thing, you know, basically. And, uh, and I was looking at the whole idea, the way he used the shapes to define the space. And that's what I was into. I was just like, I'm going to take these shapes and define this space. Mm -hmm. And it was in my little sketchbook. Just, it was all just pencil lines. And, of course, when I did it to this way, I did it all with a pen and ink, of course, with a pen, because that's what I do. And, yeah, it is about the space. It's about using that negative space, the white. The white is actually the drawing. The white is the work, which is no work. It's like I'm not doing anything other than defining where the white is. So there's no top and bottom, right and left, uh, no. There's a, there no. is a... There is a top and bottom. I mean, obviously, I, I put it up that way so that for me, there is a top and bottom. But if you were to look at it in some other form or fashion, it would be nothing I could say about it. Mm -hmm. the, the, for, me, the biggest, the... for me, the biggest thing is the whole thing is that the piece has motion. I think if you turn it in any direction, it's going to still have motion. If you turn it to the right, it's going to have motion. If you turn it upside down, it's going to have motion. If mm -hmm. you turn it left to the left, it's going to have motion. There's going to be motion in the piece. Well, you know, I, 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 see, I see what you're saying, and I see the motion. Uh, I, I actually kind of agree about the white space being, uh, uh, the, being central to the work, because this reminds me of your earlier drawings, like the oh, ones yeah. I, I have, uh, the, those first ones, like the skier. Yeah, they were mostly white, yeah. Uh, yeah, they were mostly white. And, and that was intriguing, though it was uncomfortable. And, and uh, they, were, they, were, they were a little bit, how do you want to put it? Uh, they weren't compliant with my sensibility. And so I used to, uh, I used to get, I used to like looking at them. But I would get mad when I would look at them. Because <laughs> there was so much damn space in there and I wanted it to fill up. And then when you started filling up the space, I went, holy cow, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> careful what you wish for. <laughs> I went completely the opposite way. But the yeah. space changed. Now the space is all but, black. But the, but, the, but the space hasn't changed because now just the black has taken the place of the white. Yeah, exactly. So it's, that that's it's, all it is. It would be nice to see this in, in in inverse. Well, the next version is on its way. It's well, don't color. go too fast because this is a nice place. Well, you know, I, you know, you know, this was the. Are you still here, Ron? You left. You left again. Actually, I hope everybody's just listening hey, to me. Okay, you back. Okay. okay. I, yeah. I, I, no, I know what you're saying. It's a nice place. The only thing is, it's always in motion for me. It never stays in one spot too long. Yeah. I don't remember. Remember when we were discussing about artists and how they become caricatures of themselves? Uh huh. And I don't want that to happen to me. I think uh, I want to always. What? Too late. Uh -oh. Too late. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. We don't need I mean, to go through this list anymore. Well, no, we got to go through the list. I want to know the list. We got, saying, like, we got bigger <laughs> issues. To get. Like this piece right here, this piece, I showed, I just showed it to everyone for the first time when we were getting ready for the show, and a lot of people didn't even know it was my work. Uh, a lot of people were like, this is your work? And really? I'm like, yeah. Really? I, I well, don't know, man. I, I, it's signature you. I mean, I think I could pick this out and say, it's uh, that what? Uh, well, then let me go through this because everything okay, this kid we'll said, I agree, I, I agreed with. Oh, right? that's I, that's I, the, and and so, okay, the next one. So there was a, uh, they were saying that the, the primary signifier in, in this work in particular, Justice Work It, is it was the space. Okay. okay? All right. So, uh, and, and, uh, and it spoke of light direction to them. Uh, they could feel the light in this, and and I I see it. And when I'm looking at it small, uh, as a small little icon from here, I can see that light direction in there. You want to talk about light direction? Is there light direction in there? Because they were really adamant about it. Yes, there is light direction in there. 
Like I said, it's, so, it's all about movement, man, because... Yeah, yeah. I just, let's just say yes. I'll just say yes. Okay. I can't... I don't, know if I, have, I don't know if I have the vocabulary to actually explain it. Is it intentional? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's intentional because the light adds to the force of the movement. Okay, now are you talking about a kind of perceived light, or are you talking about... The, the lightness of the 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 image itself. The I'm light talking the dark. about the way when you look at it, the way you perceive where the light would be coming from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you look at this piece, and especially in this direction right now, you perceive that the light is coming from the right hand side. Okay. And, and is it because it's coming from that ripple, or is it coming right, from... Right, exactly. I think okay. that the ripple and the way that so the the implication of what would be the clouds or what would be the fog, the mist, those little, the little seas, which are the Cezans themselves moving across the landscape. Okay. You know, when they were talking about that, uh, one kid didn't express it so much as light direction, but it was sound direction or, Ooh, or, wow. uh, uh, it was, uh, it, 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 he, uh, he looked at it as, uh, this, uh, pattern of sound waves breaking into a pattern and then scattering and ca uh, creating discord. Wow. Um, All right. I like it. It yeah. makes me like this piece even more. That was cool. Okay. What's number two? <laughs> well, that was like, that was, uh, well, they talked about, they love the balance of the work. Uh, how it just, re uh, there's so much going on and all these little uh, parts that are, uh, that make up this whole, um, but they appreciated that uh, real sense of straw, uh, that sense of subtle balance in the work. Well, thank you. That's all I can say to that. I always work on that. I am constantly, I always, always, always constantly worry about compositional balance when I'm doing work. And I don't uh, even know what, I don't even know what I'm doing. One comment was, it's, it seems very mechanical. They asked me if a printer had done it. <laughs> Ted Bot 2020. <laughs> yeah, that, that brought a lot of laughs. Uh, they really like your choices just in general. The choices you made to make just all the choices you made. I mean, uh, uh, I guess that that would encompass the balance, uh, working on balance, uh, the sense of, oh, here was uh, that, that uh, choice. Was one of the choices they were talking about was the quality of, the way they put it, the quality of togetherness or unity. Yeah, you know, that comes from drawing it in the small sketchbook. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. If, you, if it works really, and you know this already, if it works small, it generally will pretty much work big. If it doesn't mm -hmm. work small, it's not going to, making it bigger is not going to help it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I draw a somebody lot. Tell, somebody tell Jeff Coons that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you have a little balloon dog and it looks great, you should make a, a you know, a 20 ton balloon dog. What the hell? <laughs> why not? <laughs> anyway. No, I'm just saying. That, that, that I don't hate that. Jeff Coons. <laughs> yeah, just to get it came, out now. If he came on our show, he'd kick my ass. <laughs> oh, he, no, no, no. He'd hire someone. Oh, yeah. No, he would. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, he, he would he never would, get a he would hire. He would hire about 20 low-paid uh, uh, automatons to come and kick my butt. <laughs> he would hire someone. Nothing uh, against other people. God knows <laughs> studio assistants need work. I have been <laughs> one. I have been a studio assistant. <laughs> By all means. Oh, God. If I was uh, asked to kick someone's ass, I would have done it. <laughs> wow. Hey, Ted. <laughs> just say <saying>. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know you just said it. <laughs> I recorded... <laughs> I don't record a little station uh, studio yeah, well, here. I needed a uh, job when I was doing that. When I was doing that, I needed work. Anyway. Yeah, um, yeah well, funny with the things the things we'll do for money. Well, I'm just uh, saying, anyway, back to being reality. No, it, it's all because of drawing the small sketchbook. And I tell people all the time that, you know, you know, remember Reed Carwell? I, you know, he's the one that taught me that. 
that, that carry that little sketchbook all the time. Yeah, I have the little, you know I have the you know I have a little sketchbook all the time, man. Yeah, I don't live without mine. Yeah, because you never know, and and if it works good, little, it's gonna pretty much work. Yeah, exactly. If you can make it work small, it's gonna work good big. Yeah. And so I just I I religiously draw in a little sketchbook, and this was a yeah. little sketch before as well, a tiny mm -hmm. little sketch. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather lose my firstborn than lose this. Wow! Whoa! Nick well, I, only have, I only have one. I hope Nicholas never watches this. <laughs> Nicholas, God, man! Oh my God! All right. Uh, well, well, here here they, okay, how much? Well, no, we can next? keep going. We can keep going, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in, in, in tying into the mechanical printer machine-like quality was the accuracy of it, the the <sighs> work. <sighs> ah, yeah. That's only because the elements that put it together are so small that when they're all together, they look accurate. If you were to look at it closely, you see all kinds of missed spots and. Everything's not completely where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and, and so are there some mistakes in the work, or is that just something you are those misplaced dots? Uh, something. Right, everything you know, I, that and that's you know that's the weird. You, this goes hand in hand with the mechanical part. I do try to not think completely about it when I'm doing all of it because I don't want it to look mechanical. Mm -hmm. I want it to look like there are some errors. So if you were to look at it closely, you would go, oh, the machine hit a glitch. Okay, well, here's something you're going to like. They could really sense the animation in it. Wow. Yeah, dude, like I said, it was all about motion for me. It's about movement. And you know I love animation, Ron. You know yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I knew I, you would I, like that. I love animation. I just love it. And, and it does, man. The piece moves to me. I mean... When you first said you, you say oh, it's mist moving. You said what? What did you say it was like mist or fog moving across? I don't. Yeah, know, you said mountain. I, I could say I could feel the air moving through it. Yeah, and that's what that's what's going on there. That's what this whole thing represents. Like I said, it was all about when I kept looking at Cezanne's work. I was loving the way, and if anyone looks at Cezanne's work, I was loving the way he used color to get all of that motion and everything else out of what was going on. Because like, mm -hmm. he would paint the air, and you know Van Gogh and all those other guys did too. But for me, it was more about Cezanne's subtlety of what he did it. He would paint mm -hmm. the air, and the air you look at it and you go, "Wow, he actually painted the air." He didn't paint the sky; he painted the air, not mm -hmm. the sky itself. The air that's before you even get to the sky. And right. I was always like, hey, "That is just awesome that you could do that." You know, you could paint that thing that's in front of the tree and still paint the tree. Mm -hmm. And yet you can see that there was something else before the tree, and that something mm -hmm. before the tree was the air itself. And you're looking at it, you're going, yeah, man, that's the tree in the air. And that, that's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. No, I, 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 I get it. And, and as you're saying this, I'm, you know, I'm just going through, like, uh, a whole catalog of Cezanne's that I've seen. And he can, he paints the atmospheric. Uh, the, the 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 actual the the actual real space between him and the object he's looking uh, looking at. He's not painting the things in between, but he's painting everything that moves in between that uh, you and that particular distant object. And, and he does it so beautifully because you you, you can feel it, and and it's it's evident here that uh, it's. And you're doing it with black and white. And I mean, they want to talk about objects. And uh, it's like one of the things I tried to get them to to redirect them. It's like, don't look at this as something. OK, don't look at it as trying to portray things. It's just like, how does it re how do you enter? How does this interact with you? And how do you interact back with this thing? And so talk about it in in the in that respect. Don't talk about it like the little trees. I won't accept you talking about <laughs> trees. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about little trees, bro? I uh, you, there's too many of them. We need more fires. 
Yeah, smoke. <laughs> what else do you want? Hey, we we gotta give somebody uh, some something. You know, we gotta give somebody at the space station to look at outside their window. I'm oh, sure God. it gets very boring just looking at stars. Uh, <laughs> so what else you got on that sheet of paper? Okay. Uh, well, the consistency either. goes to the accuracy. Uh, uh, there, the one kid said uh, it, it feels like the explosion of industry uh, on nature. Wow. Woo. Oh, my. Mm. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know, the I, okay, okay. You know, with the whole idea that it's so mechanical in, in, in appearance, mm -hmm. I can see that. It's like you took what would be nature and you mechanized it. Mm -hmm. And I can see that. It's like, and, and, that, and that, you know, and therein lies part of what, what goes on to the next piece, which I don't want to get too far. Like, don't go too fast. Too far. But with the next piece, the whole idea is trying to take it and remove what would be most of the natural elements mm -hmm. and, then, and then try to mechanize it, but at the same time bring in more nature. Which I don't, mm -hmm. which, you know, how do you even do such a thing? But I'm trying to do it with the next one. Mm -hmm. The next okay. one is like to completely devolve all the natural elements, yet at the same time, infuse it with more. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and uh, let's see, there's two more points. Uh, and this harkens back to the sketchbook and drawing smaller. Uh, it has this macro quality to it. Uh, as if it be, it's small in, in its it, it, it's it, it's small in its proportion, but it has this feeling of being uh, a snapshot of something much much bigger. That's you know you know where that comes from, and I learned this from my art teacher in high school, and that is drawing off the board, you know, drawing off of the surface, mm -hmm. you know. You know how, you know, and, and, and it is, it's like the, the picture doesn't start at the edge and it doesn't end at the edge. Right. Your mind wants to take it further than that. Yeah, and, the edges and, are important. Right. And so, therefore, it's like you look at it and you go, oh, I can see this continuing on mm -hmm. as you look at it. And you, you can actually imagine what's off the other side of it or beyond mm -hmm. it. Or where, like, that the part across the middle comes or goes across and you're looking at it, you're going, well, it comes from somewhere and it's going to somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually, I draw with the idea that you can imagine that. And I did, I got that from my, my, my uh, high school art teacher. She was always of the idea of, hey, look, if you're going to do landscapes, you're going to do these, you're going to do this, you got to think about off the edge. Don't think about the surface. Think about outside of the surface. What do you want people to, when they get to the edge of the board, where, where do they go? Where, mm -hmm. where does the, do they stop? Is it over? Or do they continue on? And right. that, that has been a big thing with me. I, I mean, and it's, those, and it's really weird. And it's counterintuitive to the portraits. Because with the portraits, I try to make it so that it doesn't go off. The, it's in the middle. You're right there. You've got to stay centered. Whereas mm -hmm. with this kind of piece, it's like, no, no, no. It's, this is just a snap. Like you said, this is a little snapshot of a portion of something much bigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I want to... I want to believe in when I look at this because it, it's uh, you. You could look at you could say this is a very I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say simplistic, uh, but I mean you you got the little a you got the little C's and you've got the little A's and you've got the, the all the little dots in there and 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 you can regard it in a way that's kind of it's kind of flat, but at the same time, it has a real topography to it. I can, you know, I can feel the up and down of it, and uh, and the I can feel the I can feel a topography there that is, like you said, it like uh, the way Cezanne would have expressed topography. You know, Dude, I'm telling you, I learned so much from looking at his work. The whole idea that you can express depth but still make it flat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The next so piece, I'm doing exactly that. I'm taking it, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm taking this next piece is going to be somewhere else altogether. But I love when I would look at this work and you're like, wow, that's completely, perfectly dimensional. And, blah, blah, blah. and then you look at it again and you go, it's really flat. <laughs> because of the way he would arrange it all. You're like, oh, this is crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, well, he wasn't inter interested in 
uh, the object and portraying it in space. He was in interested in the the space itself. I yeah. guess that'd be the, yeah, that's the best way to put it. And the last point they made is that your work seems to be a, a pathway to madness. <laughs> I'm already there. It's a pathway to sanity. <laughs> Are you kidding? Hey, dude, look, man, this goes back to the very beginning of why I even did art all along, especially the pen and ink. I'm just trying to waste the time, man. I don't know what else I'll be doing here. Yeah. Each one of these dots is just another moment gone by. I mean, you look at that floor and you see all those dots and there's just a bunch of moments gone by. And uh, I... yeah, keep going, talk. And, I, and I'm, I'm just trying to get through it, man. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make the best of the time without like, you know, getting killed or killing, you know, even though, you know, I, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, just I, trying to I, I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, but uh, the French poet, uh, Valerie. Uh, v a l e r y. Uh, I know who he is. He, yeah, he says I write out of weakness, and uh, and then Hampson, uh, he says I write to kill time, and uh, <laughs> exactly. and uh, and then and so uh, yeah, those are uh, those are valid valid points of why you do what you do, you know. It, it, right. yeah, it, goes, but it takes so long. I go, it never takes too long. You know when it takes too long because it'd be the one that's unfinished. When they get yeah. to that last one, oh, he didn't finish that one. No, that one took too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah it's, it, it, it's funny how you recognize when it takes too long. Uh, <laughs> you, you uh, like anything else, uh, it, it walks through your field of vision and then if it isn't interesting, it loses your attention, and you lo you wait for the next thing to pass by, so and latch onto that. Yeah, you know, I've almost been. I I basically finished every pen and ink piece I've ever started, mainly because I always want to see what they're gonna look like when they're finished. Yeah, and that's the curiosity work. Like the one I'm working on right now, dude. I haven't been this excited about doing art in a long time. Well, okay, that's wrong. That's not true. Actually, I was really excited when I did this piece. Hey, um. I'm loving doing the direction I'm going right now because I don't know what they're going to look like when they get done. I have no clue. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Like this piece right here, it worked great in my sketchbook. I didn't know if it was going to work good with me converting all the pencil lines into pen and ink. Well, it's I kind of funny that you worked on those uh, when you first started doing the pen and inks, uh, uh, your portrait things uh, to the present. Uh, that, that satisfied, what, 20, uh, 20 years? Yeah, well, you know, the, you know, like you said, the, the one you have was mostly white. I took a 10 to 15 year period, about a 10 year period, really, of moving from mostly white to mostly dark. I took it to the point where you really had very so little image left in the black that I could come back. But in that time period, I learned all the different techniques to make that stuff work. And therefore, I could start doing lighter pieces with more depth actually in the dark areas. Yeah. It was all about trying to get my technique up and get my skills together in those other regions and then taking and bringing all that knowledge forward into other pieces. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing with this, like I said, this piece right now is and it's somewhere I've never really been. I've drawn some abstract works already, as you knew. But, you know, as you said, when you saw like the Earth series and other things, it was like another language in which you opened my eyes when you when you said that it opened. It did. That changed the whole way I looked at my own work. I was like, oh, my God, I'm not looking at this properly, which is the great thing about mm -hmm. putting this in front of like you having this and having in front of kids and them saying those things and making me just mm -hmm. reconfirming some of the things I thought already. And then at the same time, OK, I got to do this better, that better. Uh, like yeah. this will be so <laughs> mechanical. The next one's not going to look like this at all. The next one's going to look like, what happened here? Well, you're going to make my kids angry. Oh, oh, why? When I have them critique it again. Oh, God. The, the they, next one's... Well, the next they're going to say, gonna... They're gonna say uh, you know what? That, uh, uh, tell that guy to get a new HP printer because... Uh, <laughs> it's the last one broke. It broke it. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, dude, I'm just, you know. Yeah. 
I, I, I like I, I like what you've been doing. I mean, I, uh, uh, that show that we had you had down on India Street. Uh, when I saw yeah, that, that's when, you, that's when you said yeah. that to me about the language. I was yeah, like, what? Yeah. No, and it's still evident here. I mean, you should look at uh, some early Dada's uh, auto, uh, automatic uh, uh, drawings uh, that they did. Uh, they're very reminiscent of that. Uh, that just that there's a kind of quirkiness to the work uh, that. You know, I do. You, did you ever see the series I did of In Search of Harmony, The Little Swirls? Yes. And I did those in some reds and some blues. Those were yeah. those were those were all just me with a little with a little with a with the tiny little uh post-it book. And I would just mm -hmm. take a pencil and then throw it up and just I just would go through a whole stack of those post-its real quick like. And mm -hmm. then I'd go through and pick out the ones I thought that looked interesting. Uh-huh. <laughs> and put those uh -huh. in a notebook. And I got like uh -huh. the notebook of those little drawings, the ones I thought were interesting. And I was just like, duh, duh, okay, now, duh, duh, and just literally just not even thinking about it, just throwing them all as fast as I could draw them and then going back through them and finding the ones that look, look good. Look like, hey, oh, this would be something to work with. Wow. Right that on. same kind of thing. Just thinking about that makes me perspire. <laughs> what? <laughs> drawing on little post-its? No, oh, just drawing like that. One right yes. after the other. It's so see, cute. It, I don't know. Let's see. Let's revisit the list here. You don't oh, have yeah, to that's think. right. Pathway to Madness. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> when you draw like that in the post-its, you don't have to think. You literally yeah, you don't. Because you know that the goal it's is hard, to, It's harder to do than most people think. Well, the goal, you know the goal is to get through the whole pack of post-its. You don't have to sit there yeah. and go, okay, I got this little stack of post-its. I'm going to do a quick little circle on each one of them as fast as I can. Yeah, and that's and the goal. That's, Isn't the goal to make a perfect one? It's just whoop, 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 next, whoop, 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 next, yeah. whoop, 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 next, whoop, 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 next, whoop, 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 next, whoop, 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 next. Yeah. And then when you get to the end, you go, "All right, let's see what we got." Yeah. Well, you know, I've been doing uh, that Inktober. Have you ever done the Inktober? No, I haven't. I know I got a lot of my friends who are George Davis is knocking out some incredible drawings. Yeah. I had to finish. Yeah. I had to finish a horn dog in three days, and so, so <laughs> I did Inktober. I, I have I, I I have the kids doing that with the same intention the same intent. It's don't think, just draw, you know, and uh, and and uh, it's it's hard. It, it's a good it's a good method for uh, for breaking down those kind of preset biases you have to drawing, and uh, yeah. and and just exactly. learning and just drawing. Like exactly. Just, just getting, just burning through that that uh that posted pad. Yeah, exactly. You just try to knock it down as fast as you can. I I, I write that way sometimes. You know mm -hmm. that whole like you know Hemingway would say you you write drunk or edit sober. Yeah. Many times I take the little writing book and I go sit in the bar. Well, can't sit in the bar. I haven't been writing since the bar's been closed. Really? That says you can't even go in the bar. You, you can't you it's can't go in thing. your own bar. It's not the same thing as ignoring a hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know what it's I'm not saying? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, I like it's like writing in airports. I love writing in airports. Everyone's moving around, and you don't have to really listen to or pay to attention to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. It's <laughs> it's a it's it's a different kind of privacy. Yeah, yeah. it's just really weird. It's like this weird public exclusion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all here, but fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you, and you. <laughs> exactly. It's just all of you. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, so, hey, that went pretty good. I like that. That was fun. This uh, is a good episode. We did good here. I, yeah, this, we this, did. This one, we actually went off target first and came back around. I like it. Uh, um, yeah. We're gonna, I, maybe, I, I'm going to see if we can invite someone else next time. Another okay. artist. So All we, right. we can figure, or someone else's art. Or maybe another piece from you. Uh, uh, I, well, I mean, uh, I, I don't mind having other people on here. I mean, I think that's uh, generally what this is about. You know, I, I wouldn't mind when I finish that one painting we talked about. Everybody, I want you to know that painting was never finished. Uh, it was is in it its finished? early start. It's getting close, and it's actually. Okay, right, we'll put it back up. We're gonna bring that pretty, thing back next month. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it'll be ready. It'll be ready by the end of November. 
I'm sure hoping it is, because, you know, if the kids would stop bothering me and uh, with education. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, dude get, get here, you got the freaking inter internet. Why can't you just go on Wikipedia and figure it out and leave me alone? I've got paintings to do. Hey, you know, when you, when you, you know, like I said, you know, I learned a shitload from my high school art teacher. I'm not even joking with you, dude. My high school uh -huh. art teacher is the biggest influence in my art career, without a doubt. Uh -huh. what, what, what do you hope the kids walk away with? Uh, I, I just hope they walk away with the confidence. You know, that they, I, I don't even care if they, uh, if they go to, into uh, uh, the art field. I just want them to feel confident about what it is they see and feel in the, I want them to feel, I mean, I want them to understand that it's, not, you can, about, uh, it's not about the painting, it's not about the object, it's about uh, living your life artfully, you know, so, uh, and I know that sounds like kind of a cliche, but, uh, uh, you know, it's about appreciating, uh, where did I put it? Uh, for them. I wrote it down for them. Uh, 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 find joy. Uh, learn the innocence of, uh, that you had as a child and, uh, and, 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 and reinstitute it. Give it, give it a chance. Bring it back again into your life. Uh, and, uh, and, and look for those, uh, those miracles that happen all the time, uh, people call them opportunities and you only get one opportunity and then it's all up. And I say, bullshit, you get a million miracles, man. All you got to do is be pay, pay, be patient and pay attention. They're coming around, you know, it's so. Okay, uh, you know, see, now the conversation about to get longer again, because I got somewhere to go here with you. I got a question. All right. Now. All right. So, Because as a person who has drawn those little post-its, you know, and, and you know I draw horn dog with that, without the, with the idea of it being completely joyful. I do, uh -huh. but at the same time, as an artist, you know there's technical things that need to be done. Right, right. When does the joy stop and the technicalities take over? When the technicality is becomes the joy, is it joy in the technicalities as well? well I mean, when, I'm talking about when, when, when the formal part is all that you're worried about. Okay, then you get giant. Balloon dogs. That's the truth. I mean, the, 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 the joy. The joy happens when you're not. If you, if you're, if if you, if your whole intention is to work in the art industry, and that's your joy. Oh, you're in the happiest place in the world. But if your joy is to make art and learn about yourself and contribute to the vocabulary of the world, uh, that's an entirely different thing. And yeah, you, uh, you know, I don't know. Do you need to really pay attention to those formal things? I think they come along. I think they're important if you're making art. Uh, it, to know as part of your vocabulary, I know it's important to look at art a lot uh, and other people's art and to just see art around you uh, in in the strangest formations and 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 uh, but uh, where were we going with this? <laughs> I said to you, when does the pure joy of the art stop and the technical aspects take over? Because well, I mean, if that's, if that's not what you're supposed to be doing, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, if, if you, if, I, I mean, there was this one kid in my class, she could, Ted, she drew better than anybody I've ever known. I mean, I just looked and I would sit in awe and I go, how are you doing this? I says, I want to know how you're, what you're doing and how you're getting there. And she was going, oh, it's really easy. Here, let me show you. And, uh, and she would show me and I would go, oh, I says, I, 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 okay, now, now do this. And she would do that. And I said, okay, well, I'll try this. And she would try that and she would do it. And I said, how are you doing that? I says, so art, if that's your thing. She goes, nah, man, this is just a hobby. I says, I want, I, I actually want to be a scientist. And, uh, I just went, all right. Okay, well, you know that. I, I says, uh, 
you know so this is something that is it, it is in that category of hobby but you know for someone like you and i we wouldn't be happy if we weren't doing what we're doing doing this art thing i mean this is the way we express ourselves and you express yourselves in many forms with your poetry with your music with doing these things getting out there and exploring on these little things and i thank you for bringing me and forcing me to come out in this uh, you know I'm, I'm a freaking leprechaun i would love to just stay in my hole and count my gold uh, well, so would i i would like to, i don't have any gold i would stay at home and make more dots come over go over to my come over <laughs> Which I'm going to be doing here shortly. When we get done, I'm going to sit up and do more dots and drink. <laughs> so just so you know. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on. I wanted to drink. I wanted, to drink. I wanted to drink, but this took too, this, this, this came on too late. So I, I ended up eating dinner and I don't like to drink on a full stomach. Yeah. So well, I, like to drink, I like to drink on an empty stomach. Yeah. I like yeah. to feel the full impact. <laughs> well, I'm gonna drink and draw, and that's the one All thing right. with these. Like when I do the portraits, you can't drink and draw. You can't. When you're doing the portraits, you can't drink and draw. You can't be making someone well, else. Well, you, you you can't you can if you follow your philosophy of of draw draw drunk and and edit sober. <laughs> You, you just get that big sponge of black ink and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just saying, but uh, I don't do. You know, this is awesome, Ron. This has been fun. Uh, yeah, we made it through our hour. All right, we did good. We and made it, it through a whole hour. Holy yeah. shit! Wow. And we're doing better on the technical side. I see. I, I, I saw now what not to do when you would drop out, and that's just to leave everything alone and let you exit and come back, and it works out great. You come right back to the screen. Okay, um, all right. So the onus yeah, is dude, on you me. Know what? I, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear all the stuff that the kids had to say about the art. Some of it was right on the money. So much, I mean, like, the whole thing about space, like, once again, I said it's all about movement. Mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely Don't madness. The, <laughs> man, the madness <laughs> is a given. You know, I don't even think yeah. of it as madness. Like I said, I'm just trying to waste time. Um, the madness is just living in this world. That's the madness. I, you know, man, I have such a hard time. I, I, I have a really difficult time just accepting that this is the way human beings have to live on the planet. It's so, it's just so disheartening. I mean, yeah, but you know, every little thing, every, I mean, everything that we do uh, is, I mean, just impacting people's lives in any way and shape and form that we can do to, you know, I mean, like, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it, it's going to take a long time. The planet is always going to be here. Uh, we, we're, 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 we're a wrinkle on the planet. Uh, the planet will. The planet will is resilient. It will do it when with us or you know, without us. You do know every time I hear about an asteroid, I'm going, "All right, here we go." All right, <laughs> here we go. I just want to know when it's come so I can get on top of my roof with my beer yeah. and my lounge chair. No, no, man. For me, it's like, okay, here comes the asteroid. I'm going to go laugh at some billionaires. <laughs> You go, hey, yeah, you're billion for dollars going to do with that now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Having fun? <laughs> I just I just can't wait till Donald Trump isn't president anymore and he uh he has to he's subject to all his lawsuits and they break him down to our level and he has to walk around and take the bus just like us. Dude, that's not gonna happen. You know, even if and I say if even if That's right, I would never pick him up. Even, even, okay, I'm just saying, <laughs> if he loses this election, he's not staying in America, dude. He's out of here. He can't stay. Then he, he can go hide in Ireland. I'll find him. No, he, he's, he's, he's like off to Russia, dude. He's going to be so gone. Him and Snowden going to be hanging out somewhere over there. Wow. That would be amazing. Then he is a traitor. Just all they got to do is find extradition. And yeah, well, that's not going to happen either. That's the whole point. He would be, he would be the greatest of all prizes. 
He would be. He would be the greatest of all prizes. He would be like, hey, look what we got. Oh, God. I don't want him to go to Russia. Dude, just saying. He would be the greatest of all prizes. And he, wouldn't even, he, wouldn't even fly, he wouldn't even fly there directly. Well, hell. We'll have NATO back together so we can just attack. <laughs> this this time we get to Moscow. Damn, you know, attack, man. You know, we we got we're so screwed in so many other ways. I was listening to them talk about Afghanistan. We're never, you know, the Russians the, the Russians had to burn their hands with Afghanistan, and we decided we had to do the same thing. I don't even know yep. why. Mm. I mean, some children are just stupid. It's not that, that yeah. <laughs> you know, the stove is hot. How hot? <laughs> Really well, you got one more hand. <laughs> yeah, try that. <laughs> no, you know, it's, I think what happens to America, especially with something like there, is that they can't believe that all cultures can't be subjugated or bought out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, you well, know, you know, I, I was reading... No, go ahead. No, I was, I, I, I was reading a, a book and they were talking about uh, one of the reasons why uh, they uh, uh, brought over uh, African uh, slaves to, uh, or Africans to uh, the America as slaves is because the indigenous people could not or would not be subjugated. One, they were home. They were home. They were in their homeland. And so they had an escape route. And two, it was just that thing like, what? You want us to do what? And <laughs> they would take off and run away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know, so they found the best next thing, you know, which was take the people from their land, put them in a strange land. Now they can't run away to anywhere. Yeah, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, there's nowhere to go. You're here. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the sad thing well, that you're talking about like, economics. And, and that's you know that's the whole thing about you know conquering. And this is what I'm saying once again with Afghanistan, you can't conquer if you can't occupy. No one's been able to occupy that land. Exactly, and that's the whole problem. So you know, like the Taliban's not going away because they live there. They're not going anywhere. And if you can't pick them all up and move them somewhere, they ain't going. No. And since they're going to no. be there, we're going to have to leave at some point. Yeah, and they're gonna say, "Okay, we're gone. We're back." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, gonna be just, it's just gonna be that simple. It's gonna be just just that simple. Well, it is that simple. You know, it's they. Uh, I don't even know what we've been doing there. I don't even know why we're there. Th this is a monumental fiasco. Uh, I mean, Vietnam is a speck compared to what we've done in in the Middle East. And I mean, no one's been able to hold on to it. The British couldn't hold on to it. The Russians couldn't hold on to it. The Greeks couldn't hold on to it. Uh, no one. It's uh, like I said, once again, it's when you, everyone is really weirded out when a culture won't be subjugated. The mm -hmm. culture itself won't change. You're like, no, we're, we will never believe that. We just won't. Well, we will never our, believe that. Our intrinsic biases and prejudices keep us there. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, think we can do it. We always think we can do it. Well, we think we're right. Yeah. Then there you go. Uh, yeah. And, and there you go. Exactly. Yeah. We're we're bringing civilization to a place that's been civilized for. for 50,000, 60,000, 80,000 years. They've had people there already. They've developed a language and they developed a culture. Well, it's just like that article I wrote to you, I read to you out of the, out of the, uh, that art book where that uh, author dismissed Native American art and culture. And I'm like, what are you, what are you saying that you're actually saying the West is civilization and, yeah, exactly. every, and, every, and everybody else is not and it is here to be civilized through a vision that's alien. Hey, man, you know, African art wasn't art until Picasso stole it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
exactly. They didn't want, if they didn't want him to steal it, they should have killed him. <laughs> he, he, was, he was just across, he was just across the street. <laughs> I mean, really, I'm just saying, you know, oh, you know, that's not, that's not real art. This is just a mask. And then Picasso paints one, you're like, oh, wow, that was some art. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, it isn't a pre. It's it, it's only appreciated as something exotic, and that's it. Yeah, uh, but, exactly. But there's so much there. I mean, there's so much. There's so much history there in the work that ties that can talk to millennia. You know, that's that's what's so beautiful. It's it's the it's the heartland of 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 symbolism. If you really want to take it that far, it, it's the birthplace of symbolism. And so all the symbolism we have, even though uh, it, it evolves, it is it does have an origin. It does have an origin myth attached to it and that that or that uh, archetype uh, is has an origin, a, a, re, a, a location, geographical origin. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of strange to think when we, we, when Western art or Western history just, uh, uh, it, uh, disregards. Yeah, it disregards everything else. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't consider, well, it's not, you know, Western Western history or Western civilization is very collaborative. Uh, but dude, that even goes into the piece that we're looking at right now. Why is it called Tu Cezanne? Because, well, you know, the art that I get to look at for us, all that, that, that history-making time period was by Cezanne. Why mm -hmm. not someone else? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or something else from somewhere else? Well, fuck the French. Why are you drawing like them anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not drawing like them. I'm, taking, I'm ripping them off, dude. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's see. Let me take that back to the kids <laughs> and make a note of that. Sorry, scratch out all of the points you guys made. This is just absolute plagiarism. <laughs> Straight up death. Yep. <laughs> Why not? Well, see, then it's theft at that point. Now you're plagiarizing. But it wasn't plagiarism for them. And Cezanne is too. He's, he's complicit. Well, who is it? That, that's the problem. Once, once again, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, you can't. And we're all complicit. I'm complicit. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the most schizophrenic out of anyone I know. Uh, uh, socially, culturally. Uh, intellectually, emotionally. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. Anyway, I, he's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got so many layers. I am like a freaking onion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Peel All me right. back here, and you'll be crying the whole day. <laughs> okay, we're going to get off of here. Look, we're going right. to stop. All I, got right. some, I got some drinking and drawing to do. All right, all right. Um, go, go, do it. Here. Hey, everyone out there, we'll, we'll be back next month. With some more of this. Got yeah, maybe we'll have that. somebody else smarter yeah, than us. Or the, or the piece finished that was unfinished. Okay, or that. Hey, I'll have a goal now. Yeah, you finish that piece, and then I'll also, maybe after that, I'll have the Cezanne 2 ready to go. Wait a second, before we do it. This one was two Cezanne, the next one's going to be Cezanne 2. All right, all right. Okay. All right. Oh, goodness. What are you doing, Ron? Ron. All right. Okay. Hey, I'm, more, I'm either Andy Warhol or Donald Trump. I don't know. <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna end Blondie. The, we're going to end the I'm show. Jenny Harry. Yeah, it's Halloween's in a week, Ron. You're, you're right, a week it early. is. Damn, I look good when I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Dad. Take it easy. All right, man. You guys All take right. it easy, everyone. All, All right, right, everyone. I know there's no one out there, so. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs>